Yesterday, I ventured into San Francisco to try out Mario & Luigi Dream Team, which was just announced a couple of months ago for the Nintendo 3DS. The demo I played actually provided a substantial 40-minute look at the game, allowing us to explore some of the overworld and enter Luigi's dreams in three different areas. Now, in case you have no idea what any of that means, let me explain. So the game takes place on Pillow Island, where the Mario Brothers are trying to find Princess Peach after she became separated during their vacation. Now, on this mysterious but aptly titled island, Mario and Luigi will encounter a variety of pillows that allow Luigi to fall asleep at the drop of a hat. Mario can then enter his dreams, which consists of exploring 2D side-scrolling environments in search of something known as Chunks of Nightmare that you can destroy with a few jumps. But Mario won't have to go it alone, as he'll be assisted by Dreamy Luigi, which as you may have guessed, is the dream version of Luigi. But because these are Luigi's dreams, you might encounter some odd things. Take the people you'll meet, for instance, who all seem surprisingly complimentary of Luigi, commenting on things such as how tall he is. It's actually really funny, and it's fun to see how Luigi wants to be perceived. Beyond that, you'll often come across some face-shaped objects in the background as Dreamy Luigi can actually possess. And this is where the touchscreen comes into play, which displays the real-world sleeping Luigi. By tapping on his face, you can actually interact directly with the object he possessed in the dream. Here, for example, you can pull his mustache and use it like a slingshot to fling Mario around and access some otherwise unreachable areas. Then later on, we had to tickle Luigi's nose to cause him to sneeze, which can blow obstacles out of the way or push background objects into the foreground so that you can access them. It's a clever mechanic, and we can't wait to see how else you'll have to mess around with Luigi's face in order to solve puzzles. Now, the battle system itself sticks pretty close to its predecessors, with a still rewarding well-timed attacks, and again allowing you to dodge attacks in real time with a carefully timed jump. But this time, you'll also have to occasionally move the brothers up and down with the circle pad to avoid certain attacks. Furthermore, because Dreamy Luigi is not bound by the laws of physics, Mario's moveset has been greatly enhanced with the addition of a small army of Luigis who will assist in your attacks. In one example, Mario rides a ball made up of Luigis. Yes, you heard that right which you'll then steer by tilting the system in order to run even more Luigi's over and add them to your ball, making it even more powerful before launching it into the enemies. And that attack, like many of the special moves, were clearly designed with a 3D screen in mind. Take this 3D shell attack, for example, where you have to time your kicks as the shell bounces between the two brothers, which is actually easier to time thanks to the sense of depth. Speaking of appearances, the whole game has been given a visual overhaul while still retaining the cartoony look of the previous games. I think the art style works really well, and Mario and Luigi are as expressive as ever. And overall, I really liked what I saw of Mario & Luigi Dream Team. Although a gaming preview event isn't exactly the best place to enjoy a text-heavy RPG, I still found myself chuckling at the sharp script and really enjoyed the new dream-based mechanics. Thanks for watching, and make sure to keep an eye on GameExplained.com for more on Mario & Luigi Dream Team and other things gaming too.